so we'll start the webinar. It's two o'clock by my timing. So uh, welcome to the Cockroaches Finally Meet Their Match. Yep, it includes IPM. And this is a webinar with uh, Professor Chang Lu Wang and hosted by the Northeastern IPM Center here at Cornell University. And uh, Cheng Lu, it's a delight to have you here today. And thank you for taking the time to uh, come and talk to us about using an IPM approach to cockroaches. Sure, you're welcome. And um, so there's going to be a recording of this webinar and it will be available um, uh, within a week at um, the uh, link that's shown here on the screen. And um, everyone who's registered will get a copy of that or you can come and have a look at our website and find that there. And we also encourage you to um, ask uh, questions, whoops, a daily. Um, and there is a Q&A feature on, um, on the screen. If you put your mouse over the Zoom feature, you'll see that about in the middle of the black bar at the bottom, or my, actually maybe at the top, there is a, a Q&A box. And if you click on the Q&A box, you can ask a question. And, um, and you can also ask a question anonymously. So if you've got a question, you just don't want to have your name associated with, that's totally fine. I think it's on the right hand side, there's a feature where you can choose that. So we'll we have plenty of time to, um, to ask some questions of Chang Lu, and we also have some video to share um, that we took uh, um, on site um, in New Jersey earlier this year. So welcome everyone who's uh, joining us and look forward to a fun uh, hour talking about cockroaches and IBM. Uh, so Chang Lu, would you please introduce yourself? Sure. Um, this is Chang Lu Wang from the uh, Department of Entomology at uh, Rutgers University. Um, I'm an urban entomologist. Uh, my main responsibility here is to 80% um, uh, extension, then 10% research and 10% uh, teaching. Uh, I have always been working on urban pest management, especially on cockroaches and uh, bed bugs. So today uh, my talk will be on cockroach IPM. Okay, great and wonderful. Um, so uh, just maybe to start off, uh, so people can understand a little bit, um, what do you love about your work? It doesn't sound like a, a fun thing for many people to, uh, to, to enjoy. So what do you enjoy about it? Um, our research is very applied in nature. So we can generate results immediately that uh, can be used by the residents and by the housing managers. So we are always welcomed by the communities and we feel proud that we can make a, a, you know, an immediate impact to the local communities. But also, you know, we can uh, develop a good data that can be published and then can be you know, spread to the uh, wider community, research community over the world. Thank you. Um, so could you tell me a little bit about the work that you've been doing uh, with cockroach control using IPM? Um, Yes, we uh, recently we started uh, to do two community-wide IPM programs. Uh, one is sponsored by the um, Rutgers University. Uh, basically, we did a um, building-wide or community-wide IPM program in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Then the second one is, uh, uh, which is currently going on, uh, sponsored by the USDA NIFA grant. Uh, the goal is to um, reduce uh, cockroach infestation, uh, reduce the pest residue levels, and also the allergen levels in home environment. Uh, this is just part of the program. There is a second part that will be extension. Uh, so these are the two IPM programs that, that um, we recently started. One of them is already finished. Uh, that was sponsored by the uh, Rutgers University. Great. Um, for the details, uh, I guess we can talk later as we play the videos. Uh, basically, we did um, uh, building-wide surveys to find out uh, the pest infestation. Then we applied um, traps, baits, dust to control the existing cockroach infestations. And both uh, sites, we achieved more than 90% uh, actually elimination of infestation after you know the program. Okay. 
Wonderful. And I see that you have a couple of slides here that you wanted to share with people. And the first one is on the indoor insecticide use by residents. Right. So this slide just show you, you know, how people use to control cockroaches. Uh, some actually bought uh, chemicals for bed bugs also. So they think, uh, you know, they can treat both bed bugs and cockroaches. So it is very common people just go to the stores, buy the sprays, dust, or aerosols to control cockroach infestations. Uh, the left of the picture, you can see there are five different brands of sprays that are found in one apartment. The right picture you see, there are three boxes of foggers. Those are also used by one resident to fumigate the whole apartment, trying to get rid of the bed bugs and cockroaches. Uh, if you want to show the next slide. So see here, we can see uh, four traps with cockroaches. These were placed only for one night in one apartment. You can see more than probably 300 cockroaches in those four traps. The red picture shows the dead cockroaches that were killed as the, the residents you know, closed the doors. You know, roaches tend to hide in narrow places. The door frame or the end of the door area is one common place that you may find the cockroaches. So you can see that uh, the roaches were actually smashed as the the door is shut. So this is the one um, of those like heavily infested apartments. So with so many cockroaches, you can imagine that uh, they can spread to other apartments and also it's very difficult to control. Definitely, and so, so I'm glad you're able to share a really effective approach with us today. So um, I'm going to a fundamental question first before we move on to the details, which is um, how is IPM practiced with urban pests in a structural setting? Since you don't have a crop um, uh, to protect or thresholds or economic injury levels to base decisions on, and that's how most people think of IPM as a decision-making tool, how do you make decisions um, for structural pests? Um, for structural pests, uh, the um, standard can vary from person to person, from place to place, or even from time to time. Uh, for instance, uh, in the hospital environment, in a restaurant environment, you definitely don't want any culture to be present uh, because they can you know, transmit uh, pathogens. For residential setting, uh, it varies greatly. Some people would uh, not tolerate any roaches. Some others would uh, be able to tolerate hundreds of cockroaches. Uh, as we just see you know, from the slide, uh, there are so many roaches in the trap just one night. So um, we have to educate the people and then determine you know, how to treat. So basically, from health standpoint of view, uh, in any living environment, like uh, apartments, offices, uh, no cockroaches should be allowed. We should limit all of them. Uh, but this, in practice, sometimes cannot be done. Mm -hmm. I understand. Um, so you're going to be giving us a demonstration of the techniques that you use to eliminate the cockroaches by 90% um, in the apartment buildings in New Jersey. And we're going to see some videos of that that we recorded earlier. And um, would you please tell me a little bit about the project and the results that you got? And I know you have a couple of slides here to share with people. Uh, all right. Uh, so this one slide uh, shows the current uh, in the picture we took from some apartments we worked with. Uh, the first picture on the left upper corner shows the, uh, you know, the leftover food on the kitchen table. Uh, cockroaches can tend to actually come out, feed on the food, and then go back and hide under the kitchen table. So this is one common place you would find roaches. Uh, the right picture uh, shows the water and the pet food. Uh, this is also a common challenge that uh, found in some apartments with roaches. So they have cockroaches and they have the pet food and water on the floor. During the night, the cockroaches come out and feed on uh, the pet food. So uh, it's really difficult to can, you know, with this uh, food present. The lower left corner shows a picture of uh, cockroach debris uh, cockroaches stuck on the sticky trap. 
you know, people didn't clean the cabinet for a long time. The lower right picture shows the space under the refrigerator. Once you remove the refrigerator, you would uh, actually find uh, a lot of apartments that have uh, debris, you know, things like uh, dirt, uh, uh, cockroaches behind the uh, refrigerator area. So it's very important that uh, we should uh, check this area when we do the treatment. Uh, in this uh, study, we basically uh, did a survey of every unit by placing traps. Uh, it's a 188 unit building occupied uh, by senior citizens. The survey found that 50% of them have German cockroaches. So after six months, 78% of those uh, cockroach infestations were eliminated. And then at um, currently, um, about oh, 12 months later, 92% um, of the infestations were eliminated. The cockroach counts reduced by more than 95%. So you can see by just doing IPM, you can uh, make a huge difference. Uh, same community, we just use IPM and can reduce the infestation level to a very, very low level. Wonderful. And I think you have one more slide. Yeah. This is actually is the slide that shows some cockroaches feeding on the gel bait. So in this study, we basically used a combination of gel bait, a boric acid dust, and sometimes uh, we just use traps only to control the cockroaches. So in average, I think we used uh, about uh, 25 grams per infested apartment. Then we were able to achieve uh, more than 80% uh, uh, elimination. And the infestation rate, we I think reduced from 50% to less than 10% now after 12 months. Wonderful. Great. Well, I'm really glad that you're uh, taking time to show how you did that. So let's dive in. And um, the first thing was um, we have a video here that shows um, the toolkit that you used um, to, to, to create the, the elimination of the cockroaches. And so I am going to play that. Hopefully it will show up and um, then we can talk about it afterwards. Hi. Right. So um, if you could explain to us what you would have in your uh, cockroach IPM toolbox, that would be great. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, usually we would bring uh, these set of materials with us. First, uh, we have to have the clipboard with the blank data sheets for record the data. Uh, in terms of the tools, we need to bring the glass, a flashlight for um, you know, inspection, and the traps, uh, which uh, we call the group or traps or sticky traps, is used to uh, monitor the presence of cockroaches. We would place the four traps per apartment in the kitchen and in the bathroom, and come back uh, after two weeks or what, after a, a month. Uh, when we go into apartment, we always give resident a um, handout to um, ask them to keep the room clean and help prevent uh, the cockroaches. Uh, we would bring the bait. If we found uh, a lot of numbers, we would use the bait to control roaches. There's always a um, possibility that we need to use the boric acid dust in order to um, provide long-term control for certain apartments. We would also bring the portable skill in order to measure the weight of the material so we know exactly how much we use for each apartment. Oh, so you'd yeah. weigh how much boric acid that you yes. have mm -hmm. uh, used in each apartment so right. you can keep track of that. Right. So great. All right, wonderful. But we didn't bring the uh, like uh, caulking material or materials for fixing the structures because mm -hmm. that's we consider maybe best done by the housing staff so that they know better about the structure, they have all the tools available. So we would make recommendations to the residents or the manager so that they can later to um, fix like uh, water leaks uh, or cracks or holes on the walls so that uh, uh, the apartment can be properly maintained to prevent, uh, uh, you know, 
the carpet infestation or to reduce the harborages and uh, the food sources. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. Well, thank you. Um, so is there anything you'd like to add to that clip about um, a toolbox that people would need before they start this kind of work? Uh, yes, uh, there are certainly many other tools people can bring with them. Uh, we just uh, showed that because that's the typical set of materials we would bring. For very heavy infestations, you may want to bring a vacuum machine to remove the live and dead cockroaches and cockroach you know, skins. This would uh, help uh, uh, reduce the need to use pesticides, but also remove the allergen sources. Uh, for people who do the cockroach control a uh, lot, they might want to bring a mask. You know, when they apply dust, they can protect themselves. Uh, a hat would always be helpful. Uh, a knee pad so that they can protect their knees. Uh, things like this, you know, you can have some extra things with you so that uh, you can do it uh, safely and efficiently. Right, so that was the kit you use if you were just doing one apartment, but if you were doing it all day long, you'd want to make sure you had knee pads and a mask and take care of yourself while you're- Certainly. Yeah, okay, great. All right, wonderful. Um, so the first uh, step would be to set some traps and we have um, a video here that I can uh, show you uh, that we recorded of you setting the trap and then we can discuss that. So, um, there we go. So what do we do to put down a, a new trap? Uh, first, I will mark the date. Mm -hmm. Today will be March the 15th. Location, like number one. Uh, I will mark all of them. Number two. Uh, number three. And you don't put the apartment number on, you just put the... Uh, no. Oh, okay. Number four. So we have four traps for each apartment. Then I would uh, tear off and set up. To set up, I will peel this uh, film off and then to uh, fold. And now it's okay. So this is number four. I would also do the other three, similar way. So I will do this. Um, I will write down the date, location, And then I would uh, tear this off. We don't use the large traps because uh, it's wasteful. The small trap is enough. That's why we separate them into three parts. So I would have thought it would be more efficient to take off all of these pieces before tearing. Yes, but that doesn't work if you do it that way? No, because it's harder to tear. Okay. So you do this. Yeah, this takes time. So we already do this in the lab before we come to the field. Mm -hmm. This way we save the time in the field. So we do this in the lab. So you just bring, bring a bag of these already set up? Yes. Okay. Okay, so now I have uh, all of these. Sometimes they can stick to the graphs. All right. So now we can place these in different locations. Great. And uh, is there anything that you wanted to add um, about setting up the traps, Chang Lu? Uh, yes. So we placed the four traps per apartment because this is just a one bedroom apartment. It's a very small. If you have like two bedroom apartments or more, and sometimes you have uh, like uh, bedrooms with two bathrooms, then you would need more traps. Uh, we actually uh, typically use four or six. Uh, can be more based on the size of the apartments. Okay. All right. And we're going to uh, see some footage that we recorded here of um, of you um, laying, setting the traps and placing them. So let's have a look at that clip. And here we go. So we first uh, should check the trap under the sink. Mm -hmm. This is the number one location. And now you can see some roaches. This is a male adult cockroach. These are two females. Uh, the large nymphs, the small nymphs, small nymph here and a small nymph here on the edge. Okay. So there are three small nymphs 
two large nymphs, two females, one male. All right, great, thank you. And then we would uh, place a new one after we check this. Okay. So this is the number one location. Uh, the number two is here beside the stove. Number two. The stove also uh, has uh, one female adult cockroach and some debris. Oh, there is also a small leaf here. Great. And um, is there anything you'd like to add um, to that video, uh, Chang Lu? About uh, yes. So typically, we laid traps for 14 days in this study. Uh, in the past, we actually only placed for one day. Uh, that's for heavy infestation. Uh, so in practice, you may want to extend the placement period from one day to 14 days or even a month. Uh, actually, monthly probably be better because then for professionals, they can just come once a month and then check the old traps and replace them with new traps. Uh, it depends. Uh, sometimes when it's very dirty, you might have to replace them more frequently. But in overall, the longer period you place traps, the more accurate is the information because then you would uh, be able to detect the very low level infestation. Right, and so it can stop them from coming, from, from building up and getting more of an infestation. Right. And um, I noticed uh, we don't have any questions have come in yet. And so if you, we're going to take a question and answer break in a couple of minutes, we've got a- uh, There's a lot of questions on the chat. Oh, okay, great. So wonderful. So, um, so we'll, uh, we've just got a couple more clips that we're going to show now. We'll, and then we'll take a, a question and answer break. And um, so we're going to look at what you, how you record the results uh, that, you, um, that you take from the traps. So um, let me play that video. So how do you go. record um, what you've caught in the traps? Uh, usually for each apartment, we will write down uh, the trap counts for each location, uh, number one, two, three, four. Uh, for instance, uh, location two, we have one small leaf and then zero, zero, zero uh, other stages. So for that location, correlates to one small leaf, yes. one large male and female. Right. Okay, I see. That. For instance, the uh, three location, we have three small leaf, one large leaf, one male and uh, zero female. Okay, great. And, and then you would do that for each trap, yes. right? And then do you always consistently put trap number one under the sink and trap number two by the fridge? How do you know what that correlates to? Right, so number one, always under the sink in the cabinet. Number two, beside the stove. Number three, beside the refrigerator. Number four, beside the toilet. Okay. And then we would um, ask her, uh, the residents, do you see any cockroaches? Mm -hmm. Do they bother you? And then we also check uh, the room condition. Like, uh, do they have a pet, food and water on the floor? The sanit we would uh, visually check the sanitation and the clutter condition of the apartment. Okay, so if I were to have a cat mm -hmm. and cat food on the floor, a dog, that you'd make a note of yeah. that. So this way we know that uh, there is a potential uh, difficulty in getting rid of the roaches mm -hmm. and we would also advise the residents that uh, they should uh, try to cover or seal the food and water dishes during the night. And what is this bait and dust column for? So if we found uh, in a lot of cockroaches, we would apply either bait or dust, depends on the situation. Uh, in this study, we would treat if we found uh, five cockroaches within a month period. That means uh, below five, we would uh, not do anything except we will lay additional traps, just using trapping only trying to get rid of the cockroaches. In the past, it has been very successful. Great, and um, is there anything that you'd like to add uh, to that description, Cheng Lu? Uh, not much, uh, basically, um, uh, that's the key that uh, for, you know, uh, to do um, long-term monitoring of cockroach infestations, uh, because with this uh, data, you then be able to go back and check 
what's the results of the treatment. So always do follow up until the cockroaches are eliminated. So keep a good record, uh, certainly is very important. And we have two very short clips here um, that just show some um, examples of what it looks like when you uh, find evidence of cockroaches. And uh, so this is the first one. Um, here we go. So this area is the cockroach feces. So this tells this area used to have a lot of cockroaches. Okay. And then we um, have another one uh, that I will show. And this is, um, let's see. Maybe you want to describe what this is, Chang Lu. Yes, uh, this is a heavily infested apartment. I just want you to see how the live roaches look like in the real apartment. Uh, you can see all the um, spilled food and condiments. This is a cabinet uh, directly above the kitchen sink. The roaches are crawling around. Uh, there was actually a sticky trap over there for mice. So you can see the uh, different stages of the cockroaches, the feces on the walls of the cabinet. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you. And um, it seems like a good time to take a, a break, Nancy. Do we have uh, some questions come in for Chang Lu? Yeah, I can see a lot of questions on the right panel. Yeah, uh, the, the chat. chat. Uh, does stepping on them or squashing them do any good at all, like hand weeding or hand controlling for bugs in gardens? Uh, not very efficient, at least. I, I would suggest that use a vacuum machine. It will be much more efficient because the ro roaches crawl very fast. I don't know how can you ca catch it. Uh, it's, uh, more, more e it's much easier to use a vacuum machine. Great. Uh, there is a strong connection between cockroaches and food. Is there any other factor besides food that contributes significantly to cockroach populations? Uh, water, uh, the amount of clutter. Uh, for example, if you have a lot of items in the kitchen, you're more likely to have a, a high number of roaches when uh, they are present because then they can hide in different locations and it's more difficult to find them, more difficult to treat. And next, uh, this is regarding one of the videos. Is it important to be wearing gloves when handling cockroach trapping or control equipment? One person is wearing them and one person is not in the video. Uh, that's because Yana is, uh, you know, he was, she was uh, interviewing me. Uh -huh. uh, otherwise, we always wear gloves. Uh, you right. would uh, know if you do the work because uh, mm -hmm. the traps can be very dirty and uh, you don't want to really touch. Uh, you know, the traps with the roaches, sometimes with the mice, and, you know, with dirt. Uh, plus, sometimes uh, people apply pesticides. So you're always uh, helpful to protect yourself by wearing gloves. Great. And lastly, uh, is there any research looking at cockroach genetics over the years and the corresponding changes in their physiology that has been noticeably different? If so, what is causing these changes? Uh, back uh, about, uh, I think, uh, 10 years ago, I did a study about uh, the behavioral resistance of cockroaches. Uh, basically, those resistant cockroaches, they do not like the sugars in the bait. They avoid uh, feeding on the sugar and then avoid the bait. So they become resistant. So those roaches reproduce less and uh, they less eggs. Uh, recently, uh, there are some studies in terms of the uh, like uh, enzyme activity of the cockroach population. Uh, basically, it showed that um, the field collected the cockroaches are still more resistant than the ones kept in the lab. We also found that the German cockroaches we recently collected that had um, less tendency to feed on the bait. So certainly there is some level of resistance in the field population. Okay, and we just got two questions from uh, other participants. 
uh, ones regarding your study. Were all apartments lived in or were any vacant during your study? Uh, there are less than 5% of vacancy. So most of the apartments were occupied. And the second one is gel bait ready available to any consumer. Uh, yes, uh, but um, many brands are only available to professionals, but you can purchase them through the web. So the commonly available gel baits sold in stores, uh, maybe only three or four different kinds. Uh, one, com one common brand is Max, no, it's, um, I think it's called the, um, I forgot what's the name of it. Uh, sorry. So anyway, there are different uh, kinds. Combat? Is it combat? combat? Yes, combat is the common brand. But you can find much more varieties uh, if you look for the suppliers for professional. But you have to have a license to apply those. And we actually have a video coming up that shows the, the different bait options that you were working with in the apartment yeah. buildings. So just so you know, we turned on the video so you can, uh, you can see the video. And uh, I have one more question for you, Chang Lu, before we uh, look at some uh, video of you applying uh, the bait. Is uh, what's the biggest mistake that you see people um, making when they're uh, trying to uh, treat cockroaches with IPM techniques? Um, for professionals, I think uh, the biggest mistake is that they do it on a calendar basis. No matter roaches are present or not present, they just come and treat. That's a waste of time and a waste of materials. Uh, the second mistake is they don't spend enough time or do not treat thoroughly to get rid of the existing infestations. For residents, I think the biggest mistake is that uh, when they find roaches, instead of uh, uh, keep clean uh, declutter, they often go to stores by sprays or, go, or by foggers. Sprays and foggers are not effective for controlling cockroaches. Mm -hmm. Right, so using ineffective approaches. Okay. Yes. Great, and Nancy, do, I, uh, do we have any more questions before we move on? No more. Okay, great, all right, so, um, um, so, um, if, uh, so if you do find some cockroaches that are above the threshold um, to treat, let's look at some treatment options. Um, and, um, but before we do that, um, what is uh, the best advice that you have uh, for someone who lives in an apartment uh, that has cockroaches? Uh, for people who already have roaches, uh, the best uh, advice is uh, first, keep it clean, you know, remove the food and the water, uh, during the night, basically seal them or clean the dishes every day. Remove mm -hmm. the garbage every day. Uh, report problems to the manager of the facility. Uh, use traps to monitor population. Avoid using any sprays or flowers. All right, that's very, very clear. And. Um, and uh, what, what role can um, a resident play in uh, IPM and using IPM in their apartment? Yeah, similar to the previous answer. So for residents who live in uh, like an apartment building, uh, they should follow instructions from the pest control contractor or from the manager by you know, keeping the apartment clean uh, to report problems promptly. So some people do not report cockroach infestations. So this would be a problem. And also try to uh, make, um, I mean, declutter the apartment and uh, keep uh, uh, you know, the apartment clean, basically. Okay, great. Um, so we're going to uh, move on to some video that we recorded of um, um, baits that you used in your approach. And let me just cue that one up. And there we go. And then we can uh, talk about that. Okay, so if yeah. you come into an apartment and you've laid the four traps, mm -hmm. and um, is that it? Are you done or is there more, more to be done? Uh, we will uh, certainly uh, evaluate based on the counts. So mm -hmm. if uh, there are more than five cockroaches within the month, we would apply some bait materials. Okay, and so, what does the bait mm -hmm. do? Uh, the cockroach bait uh, is very effective for getting rid of the cockroaches. 
uh, basically the cockroach would eat the bait and then they die. The baits are very palatable and uh, they have uh, the poison that uh, can kill the cockroaches within uh, one day or two days. Oh, putting poison in your kitchen doesn't sound so great. So how do you make sure no one gets hurt? And, yeah, that's why we try to use bait rather than sprays. Because sprays tend to spread uh, to a large area, mm -hmm. whereas baits can be applied to a very small location and a very small amount. So that way is uh, uh, relatively safer compared to the sprays or uh, dust materials. And you would even do that if you had young children in the apartment? Uh, yeah, because you would apply to cracks, crevices, where children or animals wouldn't be able to touch. Okay, great. And then could you explain the, the baits that you use? Uh, yes, uh, right now we are using Advian cartridge bait. Uh, there are also different baits available. Uh, for example, the Maxforce FC Select, which is also very effective. And uh, there is a, a vert flowable bait. Uh, we basically rotate among these different baits mm -hmm. in order to avoid uh, uh, any resistance development among the cockroaches. And do they all mm -hmm. cost the same price and are they all as effective as each other? Uh, no, actually um, the avert flow bait uh, is much more expensive compared to, to the gel baits. Uh, the gel baits are relatively similar in terms of price. Uh, so each gel bait tube contains 30 grams. Uh, from distributors, you may get uh, $9 per piece. Uh, this costs, uh, I think, uh, close to uh, $20, maybe uh, $15. Right. Anyway, well, we try to use the gel base first, and then if not working, we'll switch to the Okay, so you would, so you do use uh, these gel baits first, and if they don't work, then you would move yes, to this, yes. it's great because it's more expensive. Right. Wonderful. So if you were to walk oh. into this apartment, yeah. what, how do you look at it about where you would put the, where you would put the baits? Uh, we'll put uh, multiple locations. Uh, the more locations, usually the better, because then the cockroaches are more likely to find baits. Of course, you have to judge based on uh, the size of the kitchen, uh, where the roaches are hiding, the sanitation, whatever. So we usually place uh, maybe from 50 to 200 spots but per what, apartment. It, per yes. apartment or yes. just in this space? Uh, per apartment, based on, usually it's uh, in the kitchen and the bathroom. Yes. So right. it's very critical that you apply a lot of different locations. So it doesn't have to be a large amount, it just has to be small amounts yes. in lots of places. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. And um, mm. so how would you think mm. about this if when you walk in and you mm. see this, how do you think about where you would put the bait? Uh, this is a very small kitchen. Uh, I would uh, say um, first I check every cabinet uh, because the number of roaches is actually not very much, uh, not many compared to many mm. other environments. So I probably need to apply about uh, 10 grams. Mm -hmm. 10 grams, uh, each gram I would uh, place in 10 locations. That will be about 100 different locations. Mm -hmm. And we'll try to see where we can apply. And how many grams are there in one of those tubes? Uh, each tube has uh, 30 grams. Okay. So basically each tube can place in 300 locations. Okay. Normal. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to um, add or clarify from, from that video, Cheng Lu? Uh, yes, so the uh, number of locations are very important. So basically, you should uh, apply uh, the number of locations based on the counts. That's why we use trap counts to make a recommendation on how to treat the cartridges. So, uh, residents actually usually wouldn't uh, apply to hundreds of places, but we found that uh, if you apply to a lot of places, it's much more effective than you use a lot of bait, but only place in a few places. This is also one of the reasons that uh, we prefer to use gel bait to uh, bait stations, because bait stations you cannot, uh, say, buy a hundred, or you can, but it will be too expensive. So gel bait actually is more flexible. You can apply to many, many places in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can probably pl apply it to places where you can't put the, the gel bait. So. The base stations, yes. Base stations, yeah, right. Um, okay, great. 
And then uh, we have a couple of videos here um, about uh, showing you applying um, the bait, because I remember you saying that this is a, a problem that you saw of people applying it incorrectly. So we have uh, some examples here of uh, the best way of doing that. So this is the first one. So now I'm going to show how to apply the bait. So we open the cabinets. Uh, there are some old bait uh, here, old bait here. Uh, since they are still available and only about one month old, I'm go not going to apply here. However, uh, I'm going to apply to this area where the cockroach is likely to appear or likely to hide. And here, 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 and here. So basically, uh, every about uh, maybe 20, 30 inches, I would place one spot. Okay, great. And is there anything you'd like to add to that description, Cheng Lu? Uh, yes. So the distance between the placement depends on the population levels. So you basically first have the counts available, then you do a quick visual inspection, and then decide uh, how far away those placements are. Okay, all right. And then we have a last uh, video that shows um, you applying uh, boric acid. Uh, okay, so what would I do with the fridge area? Uh, this is actually a hub area where cargo trees may hide. So we usually, at the first visit, we would move this out and check underneath and behind, see if there are any uh, debris and any uh, live cockroach is behind, because this is maybe actually the most important part of the treatment. Uh, based on the situation, we would apply either bait or apply dust. Uh, the dust we use, uh, the uh, boric acid dust, we will use the duster to apply the dust. Okay, great. So let's remove this out and see how that works. All right. So I will move this out a little bit to uh, expose that area. Yeah, I can see this one is actually very clean. I don't see any roaches, um, but uh, I would apply some dust because uh, the trap has some cockroaches. So I'm sure that uh, this area has some cockroach activity. Great. And um, is there anything that you'd like to clarify or add to that, uh, Chang Lu, about putting uh, boric acid dust around? Um, yes. So uh, the boric acid, boric acid dust treatment uh, usually is done on the first visit. And usually, as long as the area is dry, the dust can last for a very long time. And this is uh, important for the apartments with a lot of roaches, because uh, uh, using a combination of dust and gel bait will more likely to uh, eliminate the roaches and also, you know, um, to uh, speed up uh, the elimination process. Okay. All right, wonderful. Thank you. So um, I'm going to um, go back to uh, the video. And uh, Nancy, are there some more questions that have come in uh, for Chang Lu? Nope, no more. Okay. All check right. your check your chat though. Okay. All right. And uh, that, um, so Cheng Lu, I, I guess I have a couple more questions. Um, are there any key documents related to um, IPM and cockroaches that you could uh, point people to so they can come up to speed with uh, the kind of information that you know? Uh, unfortunately, there are not uh, a lot of research in recent years. Uh, the only uh, research on the IPM in parliament buildings. And it's the one that uh, we published uh, in uh, pest control technology uh, last year. Uh, it's a non-peer-reviewed uh, journal article, uh, actually for managers, for practitioners. Uh, it's uh, helpful to understand uh, uh, how you can do cockroach IPM in buildings. Uh, we are going to publish in a peer-reviewed journal very soon. Okay. So this is one that uh, actually you can uh, refer to when you try to uh, you know, understand uh, uh, how to apply bait, how to, to conduct the IPM. Okay. And uh, presumably people could contact you for um, um, for a copy of that and yeah. uh, to get notice of that. Absolutely. 
Okay, great, wonderful. And um, so um, what is the, um, we may have kind of covered this a little bit as we've been talking through, but what's your best advice for a building manager or a landlord who has cockroach problems in the building? Uh, I would say uh, the most important one is that uh, they should uh, set up a contract that is based on quality, or at least set an expectation or a standard for the contract. Otherwise, uh, you know, people come every month, they service, they leave, and without any guarantee of the quality. Mm -hmm. And without the quality control, you end up with chronic infestations. This is why that, uh, you know, for many low-income communities, they have contracted service, but they always have high infestation rates because the contract really didn't um, make it, um, uh, you know, effective. So they just come to service to um, reduce complaints, that's it, but didn't uh, really reduce the infestation. Okay, so do you have an example of the kind of measures that you think somebody should put into, um, into a contract or the kind of things that they should ask contractors to, uh, to do or standards that they should meet? Uh, yes, I think uh, first they should uh, uh, insist that traps should be used to monitor cockroaches because based on complaints, it's just not reliable. Using traps is much more accurate than based on complaints. Second is that uh, for each infestation, the contract should say they must be eliminated within a certain period of time. So this way, the contractor would uh, make an effort to come back until the cockroaches are eliminated, not just uh, suppressed. Because reducing to low, low number is not the goal. Elimination is the goal for cockroach control in apartments. Mm -hmm. I think these two things that uh, should be placed in the contract. All right, wonderful, thank you. And, um, and it looks like there might be another question or two. Nancy, is that correct? Yes, there's one more. What can apartment managers who have numerous units do to implement IPM? Uh, what can managers uh, to do for... Um, well, you kind of just covered that. Yeah, you did uh, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, basically they should have uh, like a um, building-wide uh, survey of uh, infestations, maybe once a year, twice a year. And then once they have that number, like uh, the number of infestations, then they would be able to track the results by do, uh, doing another, uh, in, you know, building one survey later. Uh, this is the, how we did uh, in two communities recently. So by doing the building wide surveys, we were able to determine, you know, what percentage of those infestations were eliminated. So this is the, uh, uh, the key actually to the success of the program. And so I, I remember you said that you had eliminated uh, the cockroach infestation in 92% of the apartments. Yeah. And so does that mean that even uh, when you work uh, with an apartment building for 12 months and, and do everything correctly, you're still going to have a low level of infestation in a small number of apartments? And the goal for that would be uh, to monitor and make sure that they that it doesn't uh, expand from that place. Uh, that's true. So in very very few cases that uh, the cockroaches lasted for more than ten months. <laughs> this was because there were a few apartments um, either very cluttered or they have a, um, a very unique uh, behavioral pattern. For example, one person is religious. So he placed um, uh, those like uh, water and food items in different locations in the apartment. And then those become the source uh, for the cockroach infestation. So it is really difficult to get rid of the roaches when you have food and water in every room. So that's why a few apartments had roaches for more than 10 months. Okay. All right, wonderful. So I do have a couple other questions. Is there a place in New Jersey tenants can report landlords or building managers who refuse to treat or call an exterminator? Um, 
I heard a lot of lawsuits because uh, when I did uh, the bed bug research, I know uh, there are hundreds of uh, lawsuits regarding bed bugs because uh, landlords didn't uh, control the bed bugs and people had to pay by themselves or they suffer. So I imagine that uh, the resident can always uh, file complaints uh, because it is a law that uh, the manager should provide the pest control service. Um, another source is to report to the Department of Public Health or Health Department in each county. I believe in each county there is a health department. They actually look at uh, these complaints. And the second question is, do you, did you do any treatments in the wall voids? Um, no, because uh, in the building we worked with, actually all of them were well maintained. We didn't see much property damages. But uh, a few years ago when we did uh, the study in family units, so some family units actually are very poorly maintained. So they likely to have broken walls holes on the walls, then if you find those cases, you should uh, try to apply some boric acid dust or some other dust into the wall voids and then seal it. So this is uh, probably a best way to deal with uh, those situations. And one last question, what is the cost difference between IPM versus sprays? I don't know if you can answer that one. Um, I think more than like uh, 15 years ago, uh, there was a study actually be comparing between sprays and uh, IPM or baiting. So basically sprays is cheaper than bait, uh, that's for sure. Uh, you probably spend less than $1 material to treat apartment compared to using bait. Because bait, uh, if you use uh, say 10 grams, uh, 20 grams, you, you would need uh, maybe $5 something to treat that apartment, but spray is much, much cheaper. However, you have to look at the, the uh, also labor cost. Uh, if you spend the same amount of time um, to treat, but you didn't get the results, then you would have to come back again. The labor become a bigger component of the cost, because the labor cost is much, much more than the bid cost. So if you consider IPM cost, you have to consider the, the whole picture. What's the total cost in terms of labor and materials? Uh, that's why I will say, I always recommend using IPM, using bait, not using sprays. Because we know that the sprays really do not deliver the results you would need. Because cockroaches already developed a high level of resistance to all the commonly applied sprays. Um, there is a really, it's not that commonly used now, but it's commonly used by the residents, not by the professionals. If you ask the professionals, most of them say they would use bait. Of course, if you add other items like uh, traps uh, or vacuum machine or other things. Great, so it, sounds like, so it sounds like the materials are cheaper, but the labor costs are higher because it's ineffective yes. and you keep having to repeat it, so great. Right. Wonderful. Um, are there any other questions before we move on, Nancy? There are not. All right, okay. So um, I have one last question for Chang Lu uh, before we uh, wrap up. Um, do you have uh, one or two primary goals that you hope to achieve in the next couple of years? Like what can people look out that you're working on and may have uh, some answers and results in, in the next few years to share with other people? Uh, one of our goals is to um, demonstrate uh, the IPM program in a few housing authorities in New Jersey. Uh, we know the IPM works, but uh, how to set up a self-sustainable IPM program in low-income community is uh, actually quite difficult. Uh, we want to find a, a better way uh, how to implement the IPM. So we have the idea, we have the uh, protocol, how to use it, but we just need uh, to see how uh, the housing authorities or any other apartment uh, you know, managers can set up this kind of program so that uh, they can get uh, better results and uh, with similar cost and also at the same time reduce 
pesticide use and reduce uh, pesticide, I mean, the allergens associated with roaches. Great, we'll watch the space and hopefully we can invite you back when you have those results to, to share those with, uh, with folks too. And um, thank you. Yeah, that'd be great. So there is an archive of uh, today's webinar and um, it's going to be available in a few business days. So today is Thursday, probably by Monday or Tuesday, it will be up on our website and um, you can come back and uh, watch it as often as you like. And please feel free to share the link with uh, people who you may uh, find it valuable. And you'll also find copies of the recordings of our other two webinars that we've done recently um, on, that, on that same uh, link. And um, so I just want to um, end by, I'll turn off the screen share and end by just saying thank you very much, Chang Lu, for you're welcome. Time and thank you for your expertise and your patience and the, the work that you do for, for everyone and uh, for sharing it with the rest of the community. So it's deeply appreciated. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Okay, goodbye. Bye.